WP Get Web Dev Tutorials for All User Levels. Okay, so part two of this question being answered here from Facebook. So if you haven't looked at it, look at my previous video, which was looking at how do we trigger animations when they become within or leave the viewport. Um, and I've done a tutorial on how to do this using native browser APIs rather than having a third party library. Uh, and that's the previous video. So uh, if you haven't looked at that, jump back and have a look at it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to work on this example. So I've just got some buffer text at the top. I've got a section down the bottom here and I've got a little egg shaped uh, icon widget. So this is using a standard uh, elemental icon widget and I've just made it blue and selected the egg. Now, once this scrolls into 200 pixels within the viewport, the animates in. If we go up, I'm going to look at the bottom one next, and then we go within 200 pixels of the exiting the viewport, it animates out. Uh, I like this kind of effect. Um, you can set it to uh, the very top and very bottom, so zero. So this animation doesn't disappear until it's outside of the viewport uh, and doesn't come in until it's inside the viewport. Um, I kind of like seeing the animation uh, animate out as it moves out of the viewport. So we've got the same with this one down here. In this case, we've used a spacer widget uh, and we're just changing the borders. So uh, if we go down the bottom here, um, I've got a weird border uh, set up here with uh, different values on each border to give us a blobby shape. Uh, and then if I move that within the viewport, then the borders return to zero. So this is using a spacer widget. So if I do the same with that, if I get up to this point here, then the borders uh, go back to their weird, uh, you know, multiple borders. So that's pretty much the two methods that I've used. So I'm going to demonstrate both the using an icon and scaling it and using a spacer widget and just changing the borders. All right, so head over to the code. And again, um, look at the previous video if you haven't already. Um, to get this to work, um, all I've done is track this whole, whole section. So I'm using WPG reanimate to reanimate uh, this uh, section as soon as it comes into the viewport. Um, and same as on this uh, one here, where I've just added the WPG reanimate class, and then it will track this um, as it enters and exits the viewport. So let's look at the first one. So what I've got here is a standard container. I'm using containers. You can do this with sections and columns and whatnot if you want to as well. I'm currently demonstrating only with containers because I'm hoping that's going to become the standard in the near future and I don't want my tutorials to go out of date as soon as I publish them. So uh, I've got a container. This is just buffer text up here. I've got a standard icon. So I can change this icon now by selecting anything I like. So maybe I'll change that to a feather. Insert the feather, update that. Now, uh, F5 is my feather. Actually, the feather does a weird thing. It's interesting. So the feather does something weird then. So you might look at uh, using something different. Uh, it could be an SVG. I've just stuck an icon widget in there for the moment. So it looks like some of these font icons do weird things. Uh, let's maybe pick something different. Maybe we'll select the fan shape. If that works better. That does the same thing. Okay, so that's weird because the egg shape did not do that. Egg and circle seem to work okay. The egg shape works fine. Circle also works. Um, so there's some funny things going on with the font icon when you scale it. Um, so maybe I wouldn't use a font icon. I might use an SVG uh, shape in here and scale that instead. All right, so then I've just got some text and I've just got a heading and some copy in there. Now with the text, because the um, background is going to get positioned uh, absolutely, um, what we need to do is make sure that all of the stuff that's on top of it 
is a higher Z index. Now, you could actually put in a um, another container in here where you can put an intersection in there and set the Z index on that if you want. Uh, it's up to you how you want that to work. So basically in that, all we've got to do is go and make sure that our Z index is higher than the Z index of the background. Now, I'm not setting a Z index at all on the absolutely positioned uh, icon, so it assumes a Z index of zero. Um, so whatever Z index we put on these other uh, widgets here is going to be on top of that. All right, so let's go back to the container. And so we go WPG reanimate. All I'm doing is in my custom CSS, what I'm telling it to do is set my uh, widget icon to a uh, position of absolute width and height of 100 and top and left. So that, can, that uh, covers the entire container. We then target that same widget and look for the elemental widget container inside that, set the display to flex, direction to column, and justify content to center. So that centers this icon horizontally and vertically. So that's all that's required for that. Uh, we're then taking the widget container, setting the scale to one uh, over a transition time of 0.3 seconds. So that is when it returns. So how quickly, see it? 0.3 seconds and it's gone back to the uh, back to the small egg, okay? So if you want that to be a longer time, just extend that time out there. And then what we're saying is, Again, look at the previous video. So if you've got WPG reanimate on there, when it's inside the viewport, uh, it adds the in view class. So when it's got the in view class, then set the scale on this to 50 and transform that over one second. Simple as that. All right. So that is the, uh, that is the um, CSS for that. Now, like I did in my previous video, I would probably, if I'm going to use this, uh, on multiple sections, I would give it a class name. So let's go back to the layout and let's call that uh, animate BG egg. I'll make it icon. Animate BG icon, right? Then I would then take that class name. Uh, hold on, can't spell here. So animate BG icon, I'll take that class. Instead of the selector keyword, I would replace all those selectors with that class name. All right, now it still works, but now what I can do is take that out of there. So I've got no CSS whatsoever on this uh, uh, widget. All I've got is these two class names, update that, get over to my Elementor custom code. Go with me a second, I thought I had that up. Here it is here. Again, this can be wherever you want it to be. This can be in your site settings, can be in your child theme. So I'm just gonna chuck that into there so that's more global. Update that. Refresh, that still works. So now, if I wanted another one of those sections, another one of these sections doing the same thing, I just need to create a new section, put a icon in that section, and add these two classes. That's all I have to do. All right, heading down to the uh, spacer widget one. That's a little different. All we're doing is there is instead of a text, sorry, instead of an icon widget, we're putting a spacer widget inside there. On that spacer widget, the only thing I'm setting is actually I'm not setting anything. So with that spacer widget, I'm just adding a widget to the background. That's it. Uh, again, the text editor here. Uh, we're going to make sure that's got a Z index of one or higher, so that the text appears on top of that background, which is absolutely positioned. On our container, go to our custom CSS, and here we go here. So the uh, widget spacer has a uh, border radius. It's a weird way they do this. It's actually top right, forward slash, bottom left. So we've got a 70% on the left, top left, 10% uh, on the top right, 
60% bottom right and 20% bottom left. And that gives us this kind of blobby shape here. Uh, same deal, when it's in the view, target it, set the border radius to zero over 0.5 seconds. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? So really the tricky part is this, and that's all done through that JavaScript. So that's pretty much how I would do these. Um, now we end up with that working. So that's it, I'll put some code up on the uh, tutorial so that you can copy and paste. Um, but go for your life, create your own animations, be creative, put your own uh, icons or widgets or SVGs uh, in the background. Um, you know, just set the, da -da -da. yeah, and just set your properties so that it's actually the back. Actually, I'm just looking at this and wondering why my spacer uh, there we go. I'm doing that on the actual container that's being tracked, and I think when I was playing with this, I put some of the CSS I did. So you'd probably take that out, make this cleaner. And this is one of the problems we've got. We're actually going to do a live. Uh, Jeffrey and I are going to do a live. Uh, Jeffrey from Lightbox, um, and explain how this can get really messy. And I've made the a rookie mistake here of putting two different lots of CSS in two different places, which affect the same element, which is not a good idea. Okay, so what we want to do is put those uh, under here. There we go. And take that border radius there out. So it just tidies it up. Instead of having some CSS on the container, some on the spacer, uh, put it all here. We can then give that a class name and then we can move it out of here, put it into our global code somewhere. It could be uh, site settings, you know, custom CSS, could be uh, your code editor, could be your own code manager, child theme, whatever you want. Uh, that's pretty much how you do it. Okay, thank you.